Warning, potential spoilers ahead. All Game of Thrones fans should proceed with caution. Season 7 of Game of Thrones hit fans with more battles, death, and romance than possibly any other season yet. From acknowledging that Jon is a Targaryen to hinting at Sam as George R.R. Martin's fictional self, Season 7 has been suspiciously good to its fans. But what will ensue in Gut's final episodes? Here's what fans predict so far. Point 1, Melisandre will bring Viserion back to life. By far, the Night King killing Viserion, and later turning him into the very first White Walker dragon, was the most heartbreaking death in Game of Thrones Season 7. The Mother of Dragons was visibly devastated when Viserion died, but all hope might not be lost for the mother and son, dragon to reunite. One Reddit user's mom has a theory that Viserion might remember its mother, with a little help from Melisandre. According to the theory, Daenerys will use her mother dragon bond with Viserion to reawaken his allegiance to her and break the Night King's spell, then the Red Woman will bring the dragon back from the dead. Whether or not the Targaryen bloodline is powerful enough to reawaken the spirit of an undead dragon and convince him to once again fight for the side of the living is questionable. Still, it would be pretty exciting to see those glowing blue eyes switch back to green. Point two, Jara will ask Theon to kill her. It was truly disappointing when Euron held Yara at night point on the Greyjoy boat and Theon jumped ship instead of trying to help her. In the season 7 finale, Theon redeemed himself with the help of the Drowned God, so it's possible he will go after his sister to try and save her. But Reddit user this. The. Last. Time thinks Euron might be subjecting his knees to re like conditions, making Yara feel more vulnerable and defeated than ever before. While it's possible Theon might go on a journey to rescue his sister from these terrible circumstances she's likely being subjected to, it's also possible Yara no longer wants his help. Depending on what has happened to her so far as Euron's slave, Yara might ask her brother to put her out of her misery so that she doesn't have to suffer as he did in his re state. We sincerely hope this theory doesn't come true. 3. Jamie will kill Cersei. Based on the Valone car theory, many fans have speculated over the years that Jaime is destined to kill his twin sister, Cersei, and stop the Mad Queen like he did the Mad King before her. On the show, Cersei receives a prophecy from Maggie the Frog as a child. It states she will marry the king, become queen, have three children, and watch all of them die. In the books, it goes further, predicting Cersei will die by the hands of the Valonecar, with the first three parts of the prophecy fulfilled, it stands to reason that the last part likely come true on the show. Valonecar means, little brother, in Valyrian. While it's possible this duty could still go to Tyrion, the many theories surrounding this prediction suggest Jaime's storyline is much more fitting for the role of Valonecar. He is closer to Cersei and has more alone time with her than anyone else. If he notices his sister, Lover is taking her power too far, he'll be in the perfect position to take her down, just as he did with Aerys Targaryen to save the city from burning with wildfire. This will, of course, require Jaime to have the courage to take down the person he loves most in the world. Point 4. Arya will use Jaime's face to kill Cersei. Taking the Valonecar theory one step further, fans think Arya will use her skills as no one to travel to King's Landing and kill Jaime Lannister. Once she does this, she will make a mask of his face and impersonate him, catch the Queen of the Seven Kingdoms off guard, and slay her. Technically, this would still fulfill Cersei's Valonecar prophecy, as Arya would be wearing Jaime's face when she kills her, but Jaime wouldn't exactly betray his sister. Arya would eliminate the last Lannisters who count, from Westeros. Finally, she'd be able to check off another name from her famous kill list. Point 5, Jon Snow will finally find out he's a Targaryen. It's not really a secret that Jon Snow is actually a Targaryen, the son of Daenerys's older brother, Rhaegar, and Ned Stark's sister Lyanna. Bran Stark discovers this in the season 6 finale, when he witnesses Jon's birth and Lyanna's death as the Three-Eyed Raven. In season 7 episode 3, Bran tells Sansa he needs to talk to Jon. 
Jon and Bran weren't yet reunited in the Season 7 finale, but their paths will almost certainly cross in Season 8, and the truth will be revealed. Plus, there's always a chance Jon proves his true lineage by riding a dragon or repelling fire. 6. Arya will become Lady Stoneheart one character fans refuse to forget from the A Song of Ice and Fire books is Lady Stoneheart, a revived zombie version of Lady Caitlyn Stark. While it seems unlikely Caitlyn will ever return to the show, some fans have come up with the theory that Caitlyn's ASOIAF storyline might be passed on to one of her daughters. While Sansa is a likely candidate because she is finally safe to seek revenge on all who have wronged her, Reddit user SoccerPerson thinks it's much more likely that a skilled mercenary like Arya would become a figure like Lady Stoneheart. At this point, Arya is a force to be reckoned with. She's essentially a silent assassin who is able to take out any opponent at will, while taking on the appearance of anyone she chooses. I'm liking the theories that basically make her Lady Stoneheart. Because nobody sees Arya killing all these people, people of Westeros will create stories saying it's the ghost of Caitlyn Stark getting her revenge, and that's how LSH will show up in the show. Arya has a bigger role to play than just killing the people on her list I feel like. Though Arya doesn't necessarily need to be dead to become a Lady Stoneheart-like figure, a recent interview with Beyond the Wall, director Alan Taylor hinted that one of the Stark sisters is going to die soon, making the theory that much more plausible for one of them. Point seven, Jen will be trade an heiress. This fan theory suggests possibly the saddest ending to Game of Thrones anyone has thought up yet. It argues that Jon Snow will have to sacrifice Daenerys to become the prince who was promised and defeat the White Walkers for good. One of the pervading goth theories states Jon Snow is the prince who was promised, that is, a reborn Azor Ahai, who was a legendary hero forced to sacrifice his wife, Nisa Nisa, by plunging a sword through her heart to unleash its true power. This is how the powerful sword Lightbringer was created for Azor Ahai to defeat the God of Darkness, or the Great Other. Legend goes on to say that the prince who was promised will one day pull Lightbringer from the fire once more to complete another hero's journey. If Jon is, in fact, the prince who was promised, and if he falls in love with Daenerys and marries her, this would make her his niece Onisa. Per the legend of the forging of Lightbringer, Jon would need to sacrifice something he loved in order to create the sword. This sacrifice could very well be Dany herself, or one of her dragons, either one could be considered, fire, after all point a Theon will redeem himself as the drowned god's champion. Ever since he literally jumped ship to avoid having to face his uncle Yoran, Theon Greyjoy hasn't exactly been a fan favorite. Still, some fans have sided with Theon's decision, claiming his cowardice was a result of his mental and emotional trauma from his time as Ramsay Bolton's pet, Reek, having been castrated, tortured, and beaten, it's understandable that such a traumatic time in Theon's life would continue to affect him long after he escaped Ramsay's clutches. According to Reddit user Topher, listen, in order to redeem himself, Theon will need to travel to the halls of the drowned god. There, the drowned god will transform Theon, who has been stripped of his pride and strength, into a fearless sea warrior, giving him a new role to play in the battle for the throne and the fight against the White Walkers. Point nine, Bran started everything. The entire plot of Game of Thrones arguably kicked off before the series began, with the actions of the Mad King, Aerys Targaryen. But user Negative Karma's Nefray thinks Bran might have had more to do with him than fans originally thought. In the season 6 episode, Oathbreaker, Bran realizes the people he's watching in his visions might be able to hear him. This could lead him to try to reason with Aerys. Though Bran is only trying to help, Negative Karma's Nefray thinks Bran's voice is actually the voices Aerys heard in his head, the ones which made him paranoid and drove him mad. Eventually, Jaime Lannister killed him during the sock of King's Landing to save the city from ruin. Robert Baratheon took the throne, but Aerys Zaris, Viserys and Daenerys, survived and eventually plotted their return. It's very possible that before he even before he became the Three-Eyed Raven, Bran accidentally caused the events that kicked off Game of Thrones. 
Ken, John and Daenerys are going to have a baby. Even though Daenerys is technically John's aunt by blood, fans have been more than enthusiastic about getting this pair together. In the season 7 finale, we finally saw the two hook up, while Bran's voiceover explains they're related. Yikes. While Daenerys believes she can no longer have children because of a prophecy told to her by Miri Mosdu or after sacrificing her newborn son to save Khal Drogo, that may not be entirely true, according to Tumblr user girl with the ruby slippers. The third head of the dragon will be Joan and Daenerys' baby? That's how her womb will kick in. I'm just saying. Death pays for life, or something like that. Viserion's death will pay for her new child's life. On the show, the prophecy goes, when the sun rises in the west and sets in the east, when the seas go dry and mountains blow in the wind like leaves, Khal Drogo will return. In the ASOIAF books, it goes further, when your womb quickens again and you bear a living child, then he will return, and not before. On the show, Daenerys believes this means she can no longer have children. John tried to convince her otherwise in the season 7 finale, but many fans take this as open to interpretation and support the theory that Viserion's death will pay for the life of a new child. Once Danny has another, human child, Westeros will finally be saved. As for John's involvement, it's not uncommon for the Targaryens to want to keep their bloodline pure. If he and Daenerys were to have a baby, it would be the product of ice, John, and fire, Daenerys, possibly shedding a new light on the theory of the prince who was promised. Besides, after that steamy scene on the boat, John and Daenerys having a baby is more than likely. 11. The Lannisters will be their own downfall. Apart from the fact that Cersei has admitted to Jaime that she is in no position to win the war against Daenerys, it's been pretty obvious from her decision-making skills this season that she is not in a good place. From destroying the Sept of Baelor to torturing El Arya Sand by making her witness the death of her own daughter, Cersei has proven that her quest for power is becoming more and more dangerous. According to one Reddit user, one decision Cersei may have overlooked was in fully repaying the Iron Bank. Tywin was no fool and he knew that while the Lannisters were in debt to the bank, the bank had a vested interest in their success. By paying the debt in full Cersei has allowed Tycho to wash his hands of the Lannisters altogether. After what we saw on the battlefield we have a good idea whose position is strongest and who the bank would like to back. This clearly contributes to the dire situation in King's Landing with no grain and limited supplies. She will not abdicate, instead force the dragons to destroy the city at which point the Kingslayer will be the Valone car most assume he will be. The irony of this theory is in this case the Lannisters are undone by paying their debt. Tycho Nestoris, a representative of the Iron Bank, tells Cersei the Iron Bank will support the chosen victor of the Iron Throne once their debt is paid, not necessarily guaranteeing it will support the Lannisters. Tycho even praises Cersei for fully paying off her debt, unlike her father Tywin. In the season 7 finale, Cersei explains to Jaime how she will use her favor with the bank to prevail in the end, but that may not be so easy. The Lannister's unpaid debt was what kept the Iron Bank interested in House Lannister for so long. Now that her debt is fully repaid, there is nothing obliging the Iron Bank to support Cersei if Daenerys should burn down King's Landing and win the Iron Throne. This theory even points out the ultimate irony that, should Cersei lose, House Lannister will come undone because they paid their debts. 12. Samwell Tarly is writing a Song of Ice and Fire That could actually be a lot more meta than you think. This fan-favorite theory suggests that in the show, Sam Walt Tarly represents George R.R. Martin, the writer of the A Song of Ice and Fire novel series, on which Game of Thrones is based. The author himself teased the possibility years ago during Comic-Con in 2014, Tyrion might be who I want to be, but Sam is probably closer to who I actually am, he said. John Bradley, who plays Sam in the show, added his own take on the possibility during an interview. One theory is that what we're seeing now and how we're experiencing Game of Thrones is Sam telling the story of Game of Thrones. 
There were even more clues during Sam's stay at the Citadel in Season 7. When he first enters the library, he sees a spherical mobiles hanging from the ceiling, which look like the one we see in the opening credits. Fans took this as a hint that the story is told through Sam's point of view. Then, in Season 7 Episode 2, we got another hint during a conversation Sam had with Archmaest Ebros on what to name his project. Ebros, if you're going to write histories, Charlie, you have to do the research. If you want people to read your histories, you need a bit of style. I'm not writing the chronicles of the wars following the death of King Robert I so it can sit on a shelf unread, Charlie gives him a displeased look. Ebros, what? You don't like the title? What would you call it then? Ebros asks. Charlie, possibly something a bit more poetic, doesn't a Song of Ice and Fire fit that description? HBO 13, Clegane Bowl, may finally happen. Fans have seemingly been waiting forever for an epic brotherly showdown between the mountain, Gregor Clegane, and the hound, Sandor Clegane, otherwise known as, Clegane Bowl. As season 8 starts, the mountain is in King's Landing with Queen Cersei Lannister, there's even a clip of him with her in the trailer, while we can assume the hound is north at Winterfell. Although the two came face to face in the season 7 finale, it seems they'll inevitably meet again. Sandor even told his brother during that scene, it's not how it ends for you, brother. You know who's coming for you. You've always known. The Cleganes never really had a loving sibling bond. Gregor tortured and bullied Sandor when they were kids and infamously pushed his face into a fire, resulting in Sandor's gnarly facial scars and fear of fire. They went on to serve for House Lannister, Sandor is a warrior and bodyguard to Joffrey Baratheon, and Gregor is a knight. The Hound's resentment for his brother deepened as they grew older and he committed more evil acts, like raping and murdering Elia Martell during the Sock of King's Landing. The siblings did famously clash in Season 1 during the jousting tournament following Ned Stark's appointment as Hand of the King. After losing to Loras Tyrell in the competition, the Mountain slices his own horse's head off in a rage and charges his opponent for revenge. However, the Hound steps in and fights his brother off before King Robert orders them both to stop. Esquire reported that, last July, actor Hafthor Bjornsson, who plays the Mountain, said in an Instagram queue. Rory McCann, who plays the Hound, gave a more obvious tease to Entertainment Weekly in early March, there will be a chance of squaring up to his brother and facing those demons. One of the special edition covers for the magazine also shows both brothers together, swords in hand. The Ringer also points out that Clegane Bowl would not only be a service to fans, but also a testament of how much the Hound has evolved as a character since his more malicious days in Season 1. He went from being a cruel and thoughtless killer, Rip Micah, a kind butcher's boy, to a stark girl surprisingly empathetic travel companion, to a reformed man of peace, to someone seeking a mix of revenge and redemption, writer Miles Surrey points out. HBO 14, Night King Wants to Kill Bran Vladimir Furtick, the actor who plays the Night King, revealed to Entertainment Weekly that his icy character has a target he wants to kill in Season 8. It's easy to assume that he's after Jon Snow, but he's had several chances to kill the King in the North, why hasn't he done it already? If he could kill a flying dragon with a single ice spear, what's stopping him from killing a man on the ground? Maybe he's not after Jon at all, maybe he's after Bran instead, according to Redditor Daughters of the Harpy, per Esquire, we've already gotten some clues in the script. Uncle Benjen tells Bran, one way or another, he, the Night King, will find his way to the world of men. And when he does, you'll be there waiting for him. The Three-Eyed Raven also told him, he touched you. He knows you're here. He'll come for you, according to the theory. Remember that in one of his visions, the Night King touched Bran and left a mark on him, allowing him and his army to enter the Three-Eyed Raven's cave for the first time. Frick also revealed to you that he thinks Night King wants revenge. But why on Bran? Now that the Stark boy is now the Three-Eyed Raven, all of the souls of the past Three-Eyed Ravens are now in, him, Daughters of the Harpy Rites. 
it's believed that the Night King and the Three-Eyed Raven are ancient enemies. One theory purports that the last hero, the warrior who helped the children of the forest defeat the White Walkers and during the long night thousands of years ago, was turned into the first Three-Eyed Raven. It's possible the Night King, who was defeated by the last hero, wants to get back at his victor. HBO 15, Jamie will kill the Night King. Will Jamie Lannister give a new meaning to his nickname, Kingslayer? The one-handed knight left off Season 7 by leaving Cersei and King's Landing and heading north to join the fight against the White Walkers. Even in the Season 8 trailer, we get snippets of him fighting presumably at Winterfell, and a sound bite of him saying, I promised to fight for the living. I intend to keep that promise, Redditor Unobis predicts that Lannister will have an integral role in the war against the dead, I think, George R. Martin is being cheeky by calling Jaime, Kingslayer, and have it taken as a pejorative term. All along, GRRM is telling us that Jaime will slay the king. Jaime will successfully redefine that perception of Kingslayer, as the noblest term as he will be savior of the realm. That's that story that will be written in the book that details the exploits of the king's guard. The user adds that his gold fake hand would come to some advantage in the battle, and that he would die in Brienne's arms. He's also in possession of Joffrey Baratheon's sword, Widow's Whale, Esquire points out. The weapon is made of Illyrian steel, which we know can kill White Walkers. Other Redditors added different details to the possibility. User John Lannister fan thinks Jaime will kill the Night King to save Bran and redeem himself from pushing the Stark boy in the first episode. Another, LKO5321, suggests that the scenes where Jaime looks through the King's Guard book and sees how empty his pages are must foreshadow that he's going to do something great to fill them in. 16, John could become the Night King. If you're familiar with Davy Jones from Pirates of the Caribbean, you might already have an idea of how this theory goes. Redditor Angkor underscore hypothesizes that the Night King can't be killed, only replaced. The user suggests, the only way to, defeat, him is that, and this was just one possible way this might happen, someone has to, pull out the dragon glass in his chest which was used to create him in the first place. By doing this the Night King would, die, but unlike what happens when someone kills a normal, white walker, none of the creatures the Night King, created, or turned would die. Instead, they would lose the mind-controlling effect the Night King has on them and they would start doing whatever the fuck they want, i.e. Rampaging around the country, to prevent this scenario from happening, someone has to take the place of the Night King by stabbing himself with the previously extracted dragonglass dagger, John, considering his heroic character, might be the one to sacrifice himself to save the rest of humankind. As the Night King, he'd have control of the White Walkers and Whites and lead them back up north to keep the people of Westeros safe. The only downside to this possibility is that being the Night King would ultimately erode Jon's good personality and turn him evil, just like the last Night King, Angkor underscore writes. When that happens, he'll ride down again and find a new replacement, just like the Night King may be doing now. It's a never-ending cycle. HBO 17, Cersei will end her own life before the White Walkers can. Cersei Lannister is keeping comfy in the south while Jon, Danny, and their armies are preparing to fight the army of the dead up at Winterfell. But in the slight chance the White Walkers reach King's Landing, she still has a ton of wildfire stocked around the city, which she used when she exploded the Sept during the season 6 finale. She could use it as defense, since fire can kill whites, but she could also kill herself in the process, according to Redditor RCHRDP305. During the Battle of Blackwater, Season 2, Episode 9, Cersei almost poisoned herself and her son, Tommen, when it seemed like Stannis Baratheon was going to break into and overtake the capital. She even had Azrael and Payne around to kill her guests, including Sansa Stark, in case their side of the battle lost. It seems the Lannister Queen would rather die peacefully than suffer at the hands of her aggressors. The same could go if the White Walkers attack. 
Cersei would rather kill herself and whatever is important to her than turn herself into a White Walker too I'm sure, user rchrdp305 wrote. 18, Gendry and Arya will finally get together. These old friends are overdue for a reunion, and it seems like we'll finally get one in Season 8. Gendry is part of Jon and Daenerys' forces, and although his last scene in Season 7 was at the Wall, this Season 8 trailer shows him forging weapons for the upcoming war against the dead, likely at Winterfell, since that's where the big battle is set to take place. Arya, coincidentally, is also at Winterfell. Some fans, like Redditors Multipopturil and J2THK, hope that the possible couple will finally get together in the final episodes. Interestingly enough, user Multipopturil points out, Robert Baratheon, Gendry's father, told Ned Stark back in Season 1, I have a son. You have a daughter. We'll join our houses. Although he was referring to Joffrey, Baratheon, Lannister, and Sansa Stark at the time, the statement also applies to Gendry and Arya. However, actor Joe Dempsey, who plays Gendry on the show, isn't so enthusiastic about the possible Gendry-Arya romance. He told Bizarre.com that the he felt a little uncomfortable discussing the topic during the earlier seasons of Game of Thrones, considering his and Maisie Williams' Arya real-life age difference. At the time he was about 25 while Williams was 14 or 15. In the books, however, Gendry and Arya are about 14 and 9 years old respectively. I think Gendry reminded Arya of her brother's backup in Winterfell that she was missing. Dempsey told Bazaar. And likewise, with Arya trusting Gendry with the secret that she is in fact Arya Stark, I don't feel like he'd ever really been trusted by anyone to that degree before. Gendry is one who has always struggled to find where he fits in society and in life, and Arya gave him a real sense of responsibility, purpose, that he'd never had before. There's a real connection there, a real bond there, but whether that means it's anything romantic further down the line, I have no idea, really. I think they need to cross paths again and spend a bit more time together. It's been a long time, watch this space for more theories as we await Season 8.